Alrighty, y'all. Hello and welcome. It's almost the weekend, so I'm pretty pumped for that. Uh, we're taking a look at something fun today and probably something I'm going to end up wanting. I can already just guess. Um, we're talking about the Mercedes G-Wagon, right? Now, all I know about this is pictures I'll show on the screen right now. You know, these are the G-Wagons I'm used to. I see these occasionally, especially around bigger cities with some, some money areas, right? Because they're quite expensive. Then, uh, you know, everyone, at least here in the U.S., knows these as, you know, a status symbol. You got money. You're flexing with this thing. And it's just a kind of pimped up, uh, fancy, you know, crazy, luxurious SUV that you buy, right? It's only used as like a flex mobile, <laughs> usually rich like women or even guys that just want to show off and they drive it to the mall and they drive it to their restaurants and their wineries and they show off like, hey, look at my G-Wagon. That's all I've ever seen. When I've ever I've gone off-roading, remember I used to go off-roading all the time. You'd think you would see something like this, but I never have seen one off-roading once. Doesn't mean they're not good at it and it doesn't mean they're not for it. I just haven't seen it. I may also mention that G-Wagons have been more of like a 2000s thing, like maybe like late 2000s to present, right? I don't remember seeing these ever before that. Every example I've seen would just be newer era. And like I said, uh, it, with an emphasis on flashy style and street performance, um, you know, like an AMG version with some big, you know, semi-slick tires or something, right? That's about it. Now, from what I understand, the G-Wagon actually has a more rugged uh, military style history and is quite the tough durable and capable vehicle and hilariously they are never used to their capability and you know durability testing here like they should be they're just like i said used at shopping malls and stuff but these things are seriously capable and i've been told by peter through a series of emails um, to look at some versions here that are even for sale and we're basically looking at some of the earlier G-Wagons, how they started out. We'll read a little bit about them. And I'm going to look at uh, a couple of military versions. And from the pictures I saw, just, just some screenshots, they look freaking awesome. I can already tell. You know I'm a big fan of the Udemog. You know I'm a big fan of like the bigger Mercedes Zetros and stuff. Their big industrial and military style trucks are just freaking awesome, right? They're some of the best. They're really, really cool and really capable from what I've seen. We all know how badass the Udemog is. It's wild. I feel like if the Udemog is just too big or too rugged for somebody, the G-Wagon would be the next step down in, you know, kind of jack of all trades, very versatile and tough vehicle. Not quite quite an Udemog, but basically better than everything else uh, when it comes to like a standard passenger vehicle or a pickup truck. So I can't wait to learn about it. Let's take a look. So starting out right away, and I'm already falling in love with this thing. I, I love rugged trucks. Uh, military trucks are cool as well. We have a military G-Wagon. Uh, this is a 1980 Mercedes 300 GD. Here we go. I think we have some music in the beginning. I'll mute and then we'll, we'll actually get to hear this thing. All right, obviously, first impression, yeah. This thing is freaking sick, dude. <laughs> I love how it's all black and just camo. Um, I would, I'm kind of going to go off on a whim here and guess that the only thing they seem to have swapped is the tires. These look like more kind of street rims, right? And then, you know, regular tires. I feel like this, I, I for some reason, I'm picturing this with some sort of like steelies or a more industrial looking rim than like this five spoke. Does it look cool? Yeah, it still looks cool. I'd almost prefer it though with like the military wheels, but that's just me. Other than that, it looks really great. Like it's funny seeing it like this. This is how it should look, right? It, or at least this is how it's always been. And this is really what it is. How wild is it that over time, you take something that's so, you know, just rugged, tough, militarized, and you turn it into this <laughs> dolled up pavement princess. It's very weird evolution of a car, you got to kind of admit. <laughs> Dang, I love it though. I, I'd take this a thousand times over, over one of the luxury leather, you know, metallic paint ones I, i'd much rather take this Ooh, there's a look at the interior and what do you know you won't find this in the hollywood hills edition look at that a manual transmission and like a totally 
basic interior. I freaking love this. This is what I would want. It looks like it's actually pretty roomy. It's got basic kind of like durable seats that would be easy to maintain it clean. You know, it, it very minimal controls, just what you need. Uh, you also got room to, you know, it, enhance it, right? Mount tools or GPS or whatever. You know, you, you got some room to play with, right? And you got that durable manual transmission. And I'm assuming because it says 300 GD, D for a lot of the German cars usually indicates that that would mean a diesel. So I'm going to guess this is a diesel. How freaking cool is that? I almost want to guess that the U.S. market G-Wagons, I don't even think they come in diesels. I think they're always like big V8 um, petrol engines. Uh, I could be wrong, but everyone I've seen has always been a, been a gasser. Yeah, this thing is super cool. And honestly, those seats might be restored. They might not be even original. Look at that super simple door card and roll up windows. Let's go. I'm all about this thing. You know, it's kind of nice. It's probably not su like 1 million percent original. It's got like tiny kind of tasteful enhancements. And I'm okay with that. It's like mostly original, right? Like I said, the only thing I would do is I would have the, the original wheels because I'm 99% sure those wheels are not original. Look at this thing. Oh, yeah. Solid door. Oh, I'm all about it. Here we go. Yeah. Dude, why does that sound so good? Wow. Dude, it sounds really smooth. It still sounds like a diesel. It's one it's got to be 100% a diesel. But it it sounds good. Oh my god. Do you realize like these these videos are bad for me, man. Learn about all these cool cars. I wish like it, <laughs> I want to buy one of these right now, dude. <laughs> oh my god. I would love to have one of these old G-Wagons. What a cool freaking vehicle. These have got to be popular in Europe, right? right th let's just say in Germany. I mean, wouldn't these be a great used vehicle? Right? Dude, that sound. Why does that sound so good? And I love that it's a manual. Dude. I could putt around in that all freaking day, bro. You can tell how rugged and stiff it is going over the speed bumps. <laughs> wow. I want one. Hate to say it, Santa Claus, add another one to the list. <laughs> add another one to the list. Um, I'll take any of them. Any of them. I I'd really like this. Damn, is that cool or what? Dude, I could turn some heads in the U.S. It wouldn't even be about that, by the way. I'm just saying that this would be like, people would be like, what? That'd be so freaking cool, dude. Roll, roll around in a camouflage G-Wagon from the 80s with a diesel. Hell yeah, brother. Look at it. We have another one. Now, this is what I'm talking about. These wheels, I'm all about these wheels. Um, This one looks like it's actually in Canada, so I don't know if it was imported or maybe they had these. I'm not exactly sure. Either way, I can safely confirm I have never seen a G-Wagon like this. Uh, like I said, any G-Wagon I've ever seen in media, 
and in person out in traffic uh, was always and has always been the newer, you know, crazy AMG luxury ones, right? They're very big and flashy and blah, blah, blah. Um, and don't get me wrong. They, they're cool or whatever. It's just not my style. This is my style. I would freaking love this. You got good ground clearance. It's very basic looking, but it's it's nice. It's handsome. And it's got the off, you know, the all terrain tires. It's got the steelies. This thing is tough. It's rugged. It's simple. What could you what more could you ask for? This is what I'm talking about. That's what a G Wagon should be. I love it. And, you know, this one isn't the straight up military style with the whole, you know, flat paint and camouflage and stuff. But it's basically, you could tell that back then that this was basically a military vehicle still, that they just barely made more streetable, right? You know, it's got all the lights you need and the, the signal, you know, the right brake lights and all that stuff. But it's it's like civilized barely, but you could tell it's like a military vehicle at heart, right? Uh, it's not this jazzed up luxury box that you can't recognize anymore. This is the real deal. So I would obviously take one of these as well. Even if it wasn't the full-on military version, this is close enough. Very, very handsome vehicle, man. Damn. They're like the perfect size, too. Don't get me wrong, I still will always love the Unamog, but they're pretty big. This, if you want like a daily driver type thing, this is perfect. Wow, what a sharp vehicle, dude. And it is indeed a diesel. Around the same year, the other one was an 80, this is an 81. God, what a beautiful truck. I mean, look at it up close. Absolutely spectacular example. Uh, I love the color too. I don't know if that's a factory color or what, or like a restoration deal. Not exactly sure. But that with the Steelies, dude, I'm freaking loving that. All right, we have one more, and I just want to point out, I will read about this, so maybe I'll kind of answer my own question in a minute here. This one's an 86, so slightly newer, although, I mean, let's get real, same era. It's going to look pretty similar. Um, one uh, major difference is, A, this is a two-door, not a four-door, so that's interesting. Didn't even know they made two-door versions, um, so that's cool. It's like a Jeep because Wranglers come a two-door, four-door, so that's cool. And, and let me specify, it's not like a Jeep. I, I don't want to make people mad. It they're different, but you know what I mean. They're both rugged 4x4s. Um, 240 GD. That's the other difference. So I'm assuming this is also a diesel, but the other one were 300 Ds. This is a 240. So maybe this is like, I'm going to guess the 300 Ds would mean like a 3 liter. I, I'm assuming an inline 6 or a V6, probably an inline 6. Um, but either way, a 6-cylinder diesel. Now, 240, 2.4 liter, I'm assuming that's what that means. That sounds like it'd be more like a four-cylinder, right? So maybe you guys can correct me. Or I might find out that answer in a little bit here. Either way, I, I think we got some aftermarket headlights. Not a big deal, I guess. But this thing's very handsome as well. Love the Steelies. I think these are much better look than the, uh, the, the fancy wheels. Damn. I'd honestly probably take the four-door. I don't know if that's weird. I feel like I would. It's it's like a little better proportions. But I, I think it's awesome that they made a two-door as well. It's nice and short, you know, and, and this would be good in certain scenarios, of course. I feel like the four-door would be a little more balanced off-road, but that's just me. This thing is cool. Oh, the, the uh, fuel filler is back here. Interesting. I didn't even notice that earlier. Interesting. Okay. This one's a California. Wow. I'm assuming these have some sort of a minimal import market here, right? Because go figure. There is people here that like foreign vehicles. It's not the average American, but, you know, there are some people that are in the know and, and would love to import stuff like me, except some people are rich and I'm not. <laughs> but it'd be great if I could have one of these. That'd be really neat. Because obviously, I don't think this vehicle has been in California its whole life. I think it was imported clearly. I think this is probably from Germany or Austria or who, you know, who knows. Somewhere in Europe. All right, you know we got to do a cold start. Look at one of these. Another beautiful example. Freaking love it in red. 
Red's my, uh, I mean, I like these in all colors, but red is my favorite color. Some little IW Rocker trivia. Damn, fires right up. That, that diesel clatter. Interesting, um, uh, HVAC patrols down there. Okay, here's one off-road. Dude, look at that beast. <laughs> Hell yeah. Dude, that's through snow and mud. Wow. Well, snow and dirt. It's not really mud. It's probably too cold. It's dry, obviously. Look at this one going through something deep. Wow. Going through really deep. Oh my goodness, dude. Whoa. Ooh. Pause, pause. Getting a little floaty. You can see it almost floating a little bit. You can also hear the brr, brr, right? Like the exhaust is straight up underwater. This is deep, deep shit. <laughs> oh my god, look at that thing go, bro. That's not easy. This is a two door. Damn, there she goes, huh? Uh, I imagine these things are rated for some pretty deep, like, deep water, right? These can, these things can ford through some deep stuff, I imagine. I mean, these things are no joke from what I've heard. Ooh, this one's screaming. Wow. <laughs> Dang, look at that, right up. Ooh, he's, he's recovering this guy. Let's go. I love a good old recovery. Give it, give it a little tug. Oh, he's gonna give. Oh, we didn't even get to see it. Come on now. Dang. Right up. Very nice. God, those things are good, even dirty, don't they? What a cool looking vehicle, man. Why have I been sleeping on G-Wagons, bro? Holy. They look so much better like this than at the mall, man. I'm telling you what. <laughs> All right, finally we have one going through some deep, deep snow and snow can be extremely difficult to get through, especially when there's mud underneath. And let's not kid around. Even though I've become very intrigued by diesels, especially out of these European vehicles, I still love petrol engines, right? Gas V8s are freaking awesome. And I think from the description of this one, this is a gas V8. Now, gas V8 singing in a truck or an SUV are also pretty badass. So let's give credit where it's due. Of course, a V8 G-Wagon is going to be capable as well. And I think that's what this one is. Look at it screaming. Hell yeah. Damn. Look at that thing go. <laughs> Hell yeah, bro. Ooh, that had a rumble. That had a hell of a rumble. All right, so let's just look real quick on our way out at the wiki. Look at the original G-Wagon. Uh, I want to see when they started. They actually started in 79, it looks like. Okay. Uh, so, or Actually, I should say the civilian vehicle launched in 79. It's military. Or in military roles, it was referred to as the Wolf. Oh, there was a variant called the Peugeot P4? What? This is like a rebadged G-Wagon? No way. Look at that. It's got the... The lion on the front. Okay, I did not know that. What? That is actually wild. What the heck? Dude, there's so many vehicles out there, man. That I would have never guessed. Anyway, look at these old ones. 
Ooh, it's got a, uh, what logo is that? What is that? Is this another variant? You guys might have to, okay. This goes back. We, I thought it was 79. This goes back to 1972. And it was branded as this. This, um, is that like Pooh or Poosh? I don't know. I, I don't know how to say it. I do apologize. But it's not like, it's not the Mercedes logo. But it's a G-Wagon. What the hell? Look at this very early one. This one's in the U.S. as well. Wow. That's crazy. These things look like they might have a following here. I might have to uh, see if there's like a meeting of some of these uh, somewhere, man. Anyway, I'm not going to read through all this. I, I, mean, I mean, I am going to read through it, but not on, um, not on video here. But basically, yeah, it had a lot of engines, right? We had inline fours, then we have diesel. So you had, of course, you always had petrol or diesel variants. Um, it looks like it had, it wasn't an inline six, by the way. Uh, what I guessed earlier is actually inline five diesels featured in those. And then the 2.4 liter wasn't I indeed a uh, inline four diesel. That's pretty cool. Um, I guess I would want one with like, if I had a perfect choice, even though I'd take any of them, I'd take one of those eighties ones. Very simple, right? Very simple version. Like kind of the ones we saw towards the beginning. As long as it was a manual and as long as it, I would prefer the inline five diesel personally. But, uh, damn, these look awesome, dude. Now, of course, there's a lot of these to learn about. Like, obviously, this one's like a newer version that we see here as a default picture. And, of course, we all know about the newer ones that are all the crazy Hollywood special here in the U.S. But um, I, I really would like to learn even more about these. I'm definitely going to read about some of these older ones. But yeah, if you have any more ideas for me or stuff to check out, please let me know. Uh, thank you to Peter for these for getting, kind of getting me started on these. I don't know how I've slept on these so long, especially since literally almost like two years ago, I looked at like the Unamog and you know, I've learned about a lot of these heavy trucks uh, in European countries. Um, as always, I, I just think they're freaking awesome. And who knew, you know, with the way you see Jeep wagons now, who knew what actual rugged and workhorse history these things have? I mean, this is probably one of the most impactful vehicles of the last 50 years, I would imagine, right? I mean, these things are probably everywhere, or at least at one time where it looks like they've served a lot of roles. So, uh, would love to hear your comments and stories and experiences with these. And if anyone has, you know, one of these older, like 80s or 90s ones and, you know, still has one, got to let me know what it's like. I definitely appreciate you watching. I hope you have an awesome weekend. It's going to be it for this one. My name is Ian. You watch 9W Rocker. Until next time, y'all. I'll catch you later.